Hi guys, this is Liz Canada from Sleek Lens. Today I have a general tutorial on the nostalgic vintage collection of Photoshop actions. So this collection comes with 66 Photoshop actions and what's really great about it is that it helps you get that kind of vintage aesthetic to your photographs that's really popular right now. So by that I mean kind of warmer tones, softer tones. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how you can use this workflow to achieve that nostalgic kind of vintage look. So I have a photograph pulled up and I have my actions already loaded over here. So for this picture I'm going to go ahead and start with um, some of the retouching tools that come with this. So if I scroll to the top here I have the skin, eye, teeth, retouch brushes. So right now I'm going to be using the enhance eye brush. So you're going to select the, what, I'm sorry, you're going to select the brush and then you're going to go ahead and hit play on the action. And you want to make sure you have your brush already set to white over here. And I'm not going to, I'm going to lower the opacity of this brush because right now it's at 50 and 50 is a little bit high. So we just want to add a little bit of light to her eyes. So I'm going to lower this to 15 and I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller, which you can do up here if you'd like, or I just use the bracket keys on my computer. And then I'm just going to go right in here and just brighten up her eyes a little bit. Alright, so once I've gone ahead and done that with this layer, I like to flatten my image. So I'm going to right click and flatten the image here. You don't have to do that, you can kind of stack the layers on top of each other. Um, when I flatten the image, that's known as destructive editing, so it's kind of hard to go back and change it. But I will show you with the next photograph how you can layer them so that you can go back and change the layers as opposed to kind of compressing it all at once. So the next action I'm going to use is a skin softener which is also in the retouch brushes here. So I'm going to be hitting this one and hit play. So same thing, you just want your brush to be set on white. And right now the opacity is set at 80, but I don't want it to be so high. So I'm going to be setting it around 47%. And I'm just going to basically use the brush all around her face here. Just to kind of smooth out any imperfections. Her skin is already pretty nice as it is. And if you look here on the mask right here, you can see where I've actually used the brush. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and flatten my image. And now I'm going to be using an all-in-one action. So I'm going to be using the all-in-one Vibrant Vintage. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. I'm not going to do anything with this. I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm going to stack another all-in-one on that and I'm going to be using the color bleach here. And I'm going to be setting this lower though down to 25% because the effect is a little too strong. So now I'm going to be moving into highlight and shadow tones and I'm going to show you. So what the great thing about actions is it kind of does everything for you and makes your editing really easy and really quick. So if you're not very familiar with Photoshop and you don't know how to create the layers yourself, that's what the actions are for. It's basically creating the layers and it's great. It's a really easy process. I use them all the time. Um, so we're going to highlight and shadow here. So as you can see, it comes with highlight tones and shadow tones and I'm going to start with a gold tone highlight and hit play. And I'm going to flatten my image again. And now I'm going to pick a tone for the shadows, and for this one I'm going to be using a green tone. All right. I am going to lower the opacity of this because it's just slightly too green for me, so just a little bit. All right, so I want to give it more of a vintage look, and one way to do that is to add grain to a photograph. So we're going to go ahead and add film grain. Um, so there comes, there's a set of actions I'll scroll down. They are so they are right here, and I'm going to be using the add film grain 25%. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. It's added quite a bit of grain, even though I chose the 25%. It's a little too much for me, so if you want to lower it, you can just by using the opacity on this layer. So I'm going to turn it down, so it's a little bit more of a subtle grain. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be using a brush that comes with this workflow. I'm going to be using the Add Light Brush. 
So you're going to go ahead and hit play. And it's going to give you this action box here. It's telling you basically to use a soft white brush like we've been doing to kind of adjust the light in certain areas. So the opacity set for this is 50%, but I'm going to be lowering it to 35 because I don't want it to be too bright. I'm going to make my brush slightly bigger. And I'm basically using this kind of on her face here. And as you can see, it's really lightening her face. But what I'm trying to do here is get like a kind of washed out effect. Um, which is just a traditional kind of vintage look is to have that kind of washed out. So I'm going to use it on the flowers up here. And I'm going to be using it in her hair. It's really going to bring out the highlights in her hair, which is nice. And then I'm just going to use it on these little highlights back here just to make them stand out a little bit and give a little bit more contrast. All right, so that's all I've done to this photograph. I'm going to go ahead and flatten the image one more time. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the original image here. So here I have the original. So as you can see, we've kind of added this nice soft yellow tone. We've softened the picture up and we've added a film grain to it to give it that vintage look. So we're going to move on now to another photograph. I have my actions open. So as opposed to the first photograph, I'm not going to be flattening the image in between. I'm just going to be layering the layers one right on top of each other to show you how you can do that and change things if you'd like. So first I'm going to start with a complete workflow action. All right, so I'm in the complete workflow here. I'm going to be using the sweet contrast just to add contrast to the photograph and I hit play. The next thing I'm going to do is apply an all-in-one vintage. So for this one, I'm going for the classic vintage. And I'm going to hit play. The next thing I want to do is add a vignette. Vignette is um, traditionally a very old thing you would see among old photographs. So vignettes are very popular when you're trying to create a vintage effect. So we're going to scroll down to our vignettes here. And it's great because it comes with different colors instead of as opposed to just black or white. So for this vignette, I'm going to use the dark red. And I am going to turn the opacity down just a little bit so it's not too dark. I'm going to be turning it down to about 64%. And the next thing, I'm going to go back to my complete workflow. And again, I'm going to be using that same add light brush that I used earlier, giving me the same message as before. Right now it's set at 50%. I'm going to lower it a little bit and I'm going to use it all on her wedding dress here, just on her in general. And it's the same thing with the last photograph. What it's doing is kind of fading out her dress and just her in general. And it's just kind of giving it a nice soft look. All right, so as I mentioned, I showed you how you can actually put the actions one right on top of each other. So if you do want to go back and change them, if you flatten the image, you really can't go back, but this way, stacking them on top of each other, you can go back and fix them. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the original photograph here. So same as before, we've added a nice kind of golden, rich tone to it. It really brought out the brown tones in the kind of mud here, and we faded out her dress a little bit, and we've just overall given it a nice kind of polished, old-fashioned look. So I'm going to move on to a third photograph. So for this one, I'm going to be starting with a all-in-one again. I'm going to be using the all-in-one alive. Occasionally I have to scroll back and forth to actually find them because I can't see that well. So all right, all-in-one alive, and I'm going to go ahead and hit play. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be going into those highlight and shadow actions again. Actually, first I'm going to go and use a complete workflow action because what that last all-in-one did was it added a really warm tone, but it's a little bit too warm for me. So I'm going to go into the complete workflow and I'm going to choose the cooler tone and hit play and that will balance it out a little bit. And then I'm going to go into my highlight and shadow tones and apply those. So for the highlight, I'm going to be using the gold tone highlight again. And then for the green, I'm sorry, for the shadow, I'm going to be using the green tone shadow. 
which kind of balances out the yellow so it's not too yellow. And then we're going to be putting a light burst overlay on it. And for this one, I'm going to be using the bronze. All right, so this box here is telling me to basically drag the light overlay wherever I want it to be. So in this case, the sun is coming from this direction. So I'm going to drag the overlay kind of up in this corner. And then I'm going to hit OK. Um, but the overlay is too bright. It's kind of washing everything out. So what I'm going to do is go to my opacity over here. It's set at 100. And I'm going to lower it to about 40%. So if I can take if I take the overlay off and then put it back on, you can see how it adds a kind of nice faded sunlight effect. The last thing I'm going to do is add another vignette. So for this one, I'm going to be using a dark green. And I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And I'm just going to turn the opacity down a little bit on this one. Alright, so I am done with this photograph, so I'll pull up the original here. So as I mentioned before, this workflow is just really great for creating that vintage aesthetic that's really popular right now. And it just gives your photographs a kind of nice polished feel and kind of like a return to analog feel. Since we no longer use film anymore and it's harder to get these effects, we can now do them digitally. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial today on the nostalgic vintage collection of Photoshop Actions and you'll be able to try it out for yourself.